Here we have a simple GraphQL server that's serving some users and a create user mutation. And we can make a query to fetch the user ID, name, email, and role. On the front end, we have a table of users and we can choose to toggle the columns for the role, email, name, and ID. If we refresh and have a look at the GraphQL request, you'll see that everything is coming over the wire here for our users. We have the name, email, name, role, and the type name that's been sent to us. We want to customize this, so let's learn how with GraphQL directives. And for those curious, the front end is a React application that has some checkboxes that just toggle a state value from true to false. The first GraphQL directive we'll cover is include. If we go to the query that we just ran previously and we add at include to the end of one of our fields and we pass in a truthy boolean inside of the if argument, this will then return the results if that value is truthy or not. So if we change this to false and run the query, you'll see here that the name is no longer in the result. We can go a step further and make this value a GraphQL variable. So here I'm gonna call, instead of using true and false, we'll set the true or false Boolean to a GraphQL variable show name. And then when we pass that through as the query variables, it may or may not be included in the response based on the truthy GraphQL variable value. We can also set the show name Boolean to a default value. So inside of the GraphQL query arguments here, we can assign the show name Boolean to true. And this means we don't need to pass those query variables with every GraphQL request. It will default to true. If we change the default to false, that will obviously exclude the name from the query results. Next is skip. This is the inverse of include. If we change include to skip, and we change the name of the variable so it's a bit easier to pass. If we say hide name as false, then that will only be skipped if it's true. So in this case, it will show in the results. And if we change the default value to true, that will skip that field because it's a truthy value. But what if we wanted to use a GraphQL variable to distinguish whether or not we want to include the name, email, and role? Now, we could repeat this across every single line and replace and skip to include here. This would work just fine. However, this can get a bit unmaintainable and there is a better way with GraphQL. We can use inline fragments with GraphQL and if we spread on user here and we pass in that GraphQL directive include and the variable for whether or not it should include it or not, we can then choose all of the fields inside of this inline fragment. So if includes fields is true, then this will include the name, email and role. Otherwise it will not. This also applies to fragments as well. So when you spread a fragment in, you can choose to add that directive. So let's write a short fragment for our user and remove the inline fragment. And instead we will spread the user fragment and we'll pass that all important GraphQL directive. Then running the query and passing the query variable, we'll see here that we can choose to include and exclude. And the default variable works here as well. Now, if we switch back to the code, and we implement what we've learned, if we update this query here for our users to include GraphQL variables for whether or not it should include the ID, name, email, and role, and these will be Booleans with default values of true, then we'll go ahead and update the query for our users to use the GraphQL directive include. Then down where we invoke the use query hook, instead of just passing query, we'll also pass the variables, and these variables will be from the use state that we have set. Now, if we load our application and we choose to remove the role column, you'll see here that the query response doesn't include role. If we do the same for email, that now no longer includes role or email. And if we choose to remove the name, you guessed, this will remove everything else but the ID and the type name. Lastly, we'll go ahead and remove the ID, and nothing is coming back in the response except the user type name. Another directive is deprecated. And this is for your schema. When you are editing your schema and you have a field that you want to deprecate, you can add the directive deprecated and pass a reason. And for this example, we'll set the reason to use name instead. We already have a name on our user. We no longer wish to use title and we want to tell the front end users implementing the GraphQL API that this field no longer is in use. If we open the Docs Explorer inside of our GraphQL endpoint, if this introspection is enabled, we should be able to see inside of there the deprecated fields for that type. 
If you try and use that deprecated field, it will not appear in the autocomplete. However, if you do select the field correctly, it will show you that it is deprecated. And that is done so it makes you less likely to use that field. It's important that any built-in or custom GraphQL directive is available to the introspection query and your directive must declare where this can be used in what location.